Uh, dear friends, colleagues, students, and well-wishers of the UT, welcome to the opening of the academic year 2023-24. This event will be live transcribed in English. The minister will be speaking in Dutch. If you want to use this service, please scan the QR code or use the link on the screen. I'll give you a minute to uh, scan it if you need it. At the opening of the academic year, it is tradition to take a moment to honor the memory of UT staff and students whom we've lost in the past year. Let us observe a moment of silence for our colleagues, Peter Aukes, Peter Paul Boscher, Bolscher, and our students, Yannick Polman, Tony Huzau, Erkin Turan, and Taina Shaw. Thank you. Friends, we last held the opening of the academic year in the center of Enschede exactly 10 years ago. It was a spectacle back then. The cortege walking through the city center, past the pubs on the Oude Markt, you get the same sorts of looks that we got today, to the music center. And the image today was arguably even more spectacular because we enriched the solemn procession of professors in toga by the inclusion of many, and particularly our students, who give color and voice to the polyphonic UT community. I'm therefore delighted to once again be celebrating the formal opening of our academic year here, in this beautiful Wilming Theater, named after a Twente icon, highlighting our commitment to and the connection with the city and the region. In these 10 years, we have grown considerably, with some 30% more students and 30% more staff than back then. It's an important development that matches our conviction that we must make meaningful societal impact by educating our share of the technically skilled talent needed to tackle the great transformations that we as a society are facing. And we have, of course, a very special guest in our midst today, our Minister for Education, Culture and Science, Robert Dycraft. When we discussed your contribution to our opening of the academic year, Minister, the government had not yet fallen, and we thought it would be a fantastic opportunity to showcase our innovations, our culture of collaboration, our impact, and to send you back with some messages for Den Haag. <laughs> Things are a little bit different now. But I really hope that you actually are now in a position to sort of share and philosophize with a little bit less restraint and share with us your ideas and your dreams, your hopes and your wishes for the future of education, of higher education in this country, underpinned by your own vision and drive for science. And I hope inspired by what you've just seen in the last hour and a half uh, in the city. You know, the last time a minister stood here uh, by the opening of the academic year was 2009, and that was Roland Plasterk. And, 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 you know, he also talked about sort of how things needed to change in higher education. And a year later, we had the Commissie Fierman, the report from the Commissie Fierman. And we're sort of, you know, a little bit further along, and the things are more or less the same, the same sorts of issues. And we have a report from the Commissie Bormans, and we have a report from the Commissie uh, Sterkens, and there's an AVTE report. Maybe we should start thinking about doing something about the higher education system rather than just talking about it. And I think that you have some ideas about that. But the fact that, that you're here and that the cabinet is demissionaire does not, however, mean that we don't have messages to give to you and to the political leadership and parliament, and particularly parliament. On the contrary, in a drastically changed political landscape with uncertainty looming before us, it's imperative that we continue to ensure that we make responsible choices. 
And I refer then to responsible choices, for example, in the current debate on internationalization. For example, in continuing the additional resources that you have been so instrumental in introducing into the system. In continuing important impulse financing, such as the National Growth Funds or the Vetuskops Funds, the science funds that you've introduced. But more importantly, it's not just continuing impulse funding, but ensuring that we anchor the results structurally and sustainably. You know, we all, as, as members of this European project, also uh, committed to Europe that we would invest 3% of our GDP in higher education. We're not quite there yet. And I think that's also a message to, to cabinets to come. These are things that we have to keep doing. Because after all, the education of our young people at all levels is the one thing. There is no such thing, they say, as a sure thing in investment. But there is one, and that's education. There is the only thing that is guaranteed to give you a societal return on investment, and that is education. That is investing in our young people. Thank you. I hadn't quite counted on that, but thank you anyway. <laughs> and finally, it's, it's about f making responsible choices in, in finding the balance in reforms of the higher education system. And we have to do this in collaboration with all stakeholders, you know, because you, you, you heard from Anka this afternoon about the financing of the Hogeschole. And, and, and the point is that when we talk about financing of our higher education system, you have to think about the entire system. We have to look at it holistically. We cannot start looking at things in bits and pieces and in silos because it just doesn't work that way. Okay, that was not in the script. <laughs> and all of this is so that we focus even more on educational quality, on educational equity, on educational diversity, on making sure that the students who are enrolled, who, who, who enter our system are enrolled in the right programs and the right institutions for them. And given our focus as a university, I have a particular interest, we have a particular interest on stimulating broad science and engineering talent who, by contributing to a stronger cooperation between science, technology, and society, you were in Japan last year at the STS Forum, will have a lasting impact on the great societal transformations that we face. Let's talk about internationalization. Can I get that slide, please? You know, this, of course, this is an issue that affects me personally. I have been an international student in the US, and I have been a national scientist and scholar in Germany, in the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands. So it really does affect me. But more importantly, the current discussion on internationalization and language deeply affects the core of our community. Look at this slide. Look at this slide behind me. These are the students whom we welcomed in the cohort beginning today. This is last week's Kekin. They're a diverse and very international group. And like me, about this time, 38 years ago, and I'm dating myself, I know, uh, uh, they've traveled from all over the world to learn from our community and to contribute back to our community. And that is in keeping with our role as an international university. With a border a few kilometers from here, with an entire faculty, ITC, that focuses on capacity building and education internationally, we are an institution that is squarely engaged with our neighbors in Europe, that believes in the European ideal, and indeed with the world. We are international. To be honest, I, I, I toyed with the idea of giving one third of my speech in English and two thirds in Dutch, uh, as our programs may have to do. <laughs> my, <coughs> my give, <laughs> Gezien het feit dat Nederlands mijn zesde taal is, uh, dacht ik, 
ik ga gewoon niet in steenkolen Nederlands spreken, maar wel in wat betere Engels. So and I took the chance that, that you know, having one third of the total program in Dutch, because the minister will speak in Dutch, uh, uh, or maybe not uh, in Dutch, but anyway, for whatever it is, uh, uh, I thought maybe this transition period that uh, it's okay for me to, to, to speak the way I speak uh, and hope to connect both worlds because, you know, we have a lot to offer each other. But anyway, for our international staff and, uni and students, the current discussion about internationalization and working and teaching the teaching language, you know, sometimes feels, sometimes feels like a blatant disregard or lack of appreciation of what they have to offer to our community and, and our community at large. To my international colleagues and students, let me just say that I can only reiterate and emphasize how much we value your presence and contributions to our community in all respects. You know, the great challenges of our time, the great challenges that we face are global problems. And, 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 and neither these problems nor the solutions that contribute to, uh, nor the knowledge actually that contributes to the solutions to these problems respect political or linguistic boundaries. Uh, and all of our students and staff, be they Dutch or international, contribute intrinsically with their diverse talents, their abilities, their backgrounds and lived experiences to the quality of our education and, and research. Minister, this doesn't mean that we are tone deaf to the signals that we are hearing from politics and society. They are loud and clear. We hear the signals about the downside of internationalization. For example, the lack of accessibility to educational programs facing a capacity crunch, and the lack of housing in some cities. Together with our deans sitting there, we as a board have been very, very clear in communicating to our community uh, openly and transparently that things are very likely going to change. And while we don't know what it's exactly going to look like in the future, we will do everything we can to build on what we have put together over all these years while seeking the right balance. But I must say we also feel that we're being confronted by generic solutions to specific problems that the problems that are playing out in the Randstad in some cities are affecting us in a way that does not match our daily reality and our location and our character as a university. So, I mean, my, my plea here is also to say, look, think about the local context. The local contexts differ, and our local context requires maybe a different solution. We are, we are, we are acutely aware of the critical notes from society. And we are acutely aware of the fact that we are here to make an impact on society as institutions. That is, after all, the foundation of what we set out to do, to create impact. I can't think of anything more impactful than educating the future generation. It's why we're here in the center of the city again. It's why we engage with our local and regional partners and stakeholders and why we strive to be open and accessible. And above all, to train technically skilled talents, students who've been exposed to working in interdisciplinary and, and, and diverse teams on meaningful challenges to contribute to making a meaningful impact on the wicked problems that face society. And there is the dilemma. Technical talent with a broad perspective is crucial for the future of the Netherlands and for solutions to the transformations we face. The tech enterprises in the region here and further afield are screaming for talent. In fact, the demand for technically trained talent is such that it requires a giant jump in the scale of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You've, of course, spent many years in the US, the STEM disciplines. Uh, in that sort of education. But, but the reality is that the number of students in our schools at Havo and FVO who choose an N profile is declining. So we've got work to do. This needs attention for the coming years from schools, universities, and the governments because it has a sort of follow-on effect. It's a domino effect. So you have fewer students choosing to continue in technical programs in higher education. And it's not just my problem. Anka has the same problem. So what do you do? 
As long as there is a mismatch between the demand for tech talent in the Netherlands and the interests of our youth, we have no option than to look outside our borders. Our study programs are highly regarded abroad, and NUFIC figures show that 40% of engineering graduates are still working in the Netherlands five years after graduation. And while we can absolutely work on getting this stay rate up higher, I think it's already a valuable contribution to the task that we face together. And as I said, the problem of t technical talent is not only one of the university alone. Yeah? It's a problem felt by my colleagues Anka Mulder and Trudy Foss, uh, chairpersons of Saxion and the Aerosafe and Twente, respectively. They're both sitting here today, front and center. Uh, and, and, and I'm really proud how, how we as a university have joined forces with the Aerosafe and Twente and Saxion when it comes to attracting and motivating talent to study engineering. And as we said this afternoon over lunch, this is what we want to focus on. This is where we get energy from. It's a great example of how we work together on the region's challenges. We are setting the region front and center. I started with speaking about the polyphonic UT community, you know, and this collaboration between the three institutions, each with a distinct voice and identity, also leads to a pleasing polyphony in the, in the region. Can I get the next slide? And a perfect example of this teamwork is the Solar Team 20. And if you look right behind you, Minister, you have uh, Hjalmar and, and, and team right there. Uh, and Kirsten, I see f at least four in the, in, in, in the T-shirts. But this is a perfect example of, the, uh, of, of, of teamwork, Solar Team 20. This is comprised of talent from all three of our institutions, from the UT, from Saxion, from the Aerosate from 20. And they're on their way to Australia hoping to win that race with this car, Red X. So let's give them a hand and wish them luck. <laughs> and we don't have the car here, but you know, we got you to sit in the green car, but you know, next time we'll get you to get in the solar car as well. And we obviously also work together with many other partners, partners in the region, such as the business community, and I think alumnus Dennis Skipper from Demcon and many others are, are present here today. The municipalities, and I'd like to welcome the, the Alderman for Education and Deputy Mayor uh, of Enschede, uh, Harmian Feder, and the Mayor of uh, Hengelo, Sander Skelberg, and, and we see that uh, the Mayor of uh, Zwolle, Peter Snyders, is also here. We work together with the, the, the province of Overijssel and, and, and the Twente board. And together what we're doing is we're constantly looking for how we can do better and how we can strengthen each other based on our individual strengths. The growth we have experienced in recent years enables us to increase our societal added value. And we do this not only here in Twente, but also further afield. I mean, we're not just, you know, looking, sort of staring at our navels within the few hundred square kilometers. I already talked about our, our, our faculty, ITC, which is present in Asia and Africa and elsewhere. We, you know, I mean, in Twente, for example, we're working closely with many stakeholders and in, and, and in the context and with the support of the economic board, the Twente board. And for example, in the Chip Tech uh, Twente program, uh, we're trying to realize specialized production facilities using our, our expertise and knowledge in the field of chip design and photonics. Uh, and in advanced manufacturing, uh, with the support of the, of, of the Twente board, we'll be officially opening the new facilities for the uh, Fraunhofer Innovation Platform for Advanced Manufacturing and the Industrial Shop Floor, the Advanced Manufacturing Center, on the 10th of October. A bit further afield, Together with Saxion again, and a number of public and private parties, uh, we are participating in the Center for Security and Digitalization in Apeldoorn, where we're working on scalable solutions for lifelong learning. It's something that you've also made. It, you, it, it's very clear in, in the strategies of the cabinet that lifelong learning is going to be very important going in, in the future. We're working on that. In Zwolle, we're working uh, together with the municipality, and again, I welcome Peter Schneiders, the, the mayor of Zwolle, with the Economic Board in Zwolle and Windesheim, we're looking at the possibilities to work on smart manufacturing and climate adaptation. In the field of medical technology, we have a long-standing partnership with the Radboud University uh, Medical Center they were, to help us set up the, uh, the technical medicine program, and, and that is intensifying. 
And of course, we have an alliance with the Freie Universiteit Amsterdam. I know a little bit about that alliance. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, we start today with our second educational program, Creative Technology, at the location of the FU Amsterdam, providing opportunities to technical talent around Amsterdam. There was a huge difference, yeah? The province of North Holland, 11% of, 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 of students would, would go for uh, technical programs, uh, where the, the, the national average was somewhere around 20, 21%. This allows for more students in, in, in North Holland to actually to, 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 to get, to choose a, a technical program. The majority of the first cohort of our first program, mechanical engineering, which I we helped to, to launch uh, in, with another, in another role, is now continuing their study at the UT in the master phase, showing how this is a win-win situation for our region. And finally, situated as we are on the border with Germany, it's natural for us to have cross-border cooperation. The University of Münster is a strategic partner with whom we're setting up a battery competence center, again together with the Tenter Board and the Economic Board in Münster. We're working together with the, uh, uh, with the hospital, the university hospitals in Münster. These developments strengthen Twente and the Eastern Netherlands into an important technological ecosystem. And in the context of the Twente Board, we are thereby working together with Brainport, another technological ecosystem, as you might know, uh, to achieve a national a technological ecosystem on a European scale. Because you know what? This whole business of trying to be competing amongst each other within this country, it's really worth beans. <laughs> yeah? The real competition is in Shanghai, Singapore, in Zurich, in Cambridge, whether it's Cambridge, UK, or Cambridge, uh, uh, Massachusetts, I'll let you take, take your pick. We need to work together as Dutch institutions, as Dutch ecosystems, because we have a hell of a lot to offer. Only we got to stop, as the Dutch so beautifully say, Elkar the tent out factor. Your Excellency, as a university, it is our ambition, together with our collaborators in the region and elsewhere, to create the necessary preconditions in terms of talent, innovation, and cooperation to address the transformations in climate, in education, in healthcare, in agriculture, and digitalization that are national priorities that keep you and your colleagues in politics and in the cabinet busy. These ambitions are how we contribute to your foresight exercise, your Tukumsverkening launched by your ministry. But Your Excellency, small steps are not enough. You know, I mean, I've heard the, the, the moonshot and Apollo uh, mission being called upon quite a lot in the last few weeks. And, and if I may, this requires a giant leap across the Eastern Netherlands that we, as, and as partners in this ecosystem, and I'm looking at my, my colleagues uh, from Saxion and Erosé, but there's also lots of other people around here, the municipalities, the businesses, who are in this journey together. We are keen to make this step as a team together with our partners for mankind. And as with the Apollo missions, it also requires explicit support and commitment from politics and society. You know all the reports, Minister. You know El Carregio Tel, there's the Kennis, uh, the, the Kansen Agenda from the, the Raad for the Leefomgeving and Infrastructure, the Raad for Volksgezondheid and Samenleving, and, and, and the Raad for the Openbaar Bestuur. These all offer fantastic starting points, but we're already doing it. And that's where you and your colleagues come in, Excellency. Give us the room to experiment and the boundary conditions to make it happen. Recognize that local contexts differ. 
recognize the strength and the potential that we have here in the region. Help us make our dreams fly.